hello hello everyone my name is elise welcome to my channel i hope you're all doing so so good today we are doing a book haul revisit a very belated one i've been saying this a lot in my videos that everything's pretty belated um and essentially i'm doing my book haul revisit for the month of what was it february yes february and that means that one of those February books I'm supposed to read in March. Now today is March 24th. So we basically have six days, seven days, seven days, six days, I don't even know, in order to read the book that I need to pick. And I have not chosen it yet. So that's definitely going to factor into the book I choose because I need to read it quickly. And of course, I'm already in the middle of, you know, three or four or maybe even five other books because I read multiple books at one time. So it's going to be a little bit of a feat for me, but we will see how we get through it. Now, the book haul for February is not huge. It's seven books total. Is that right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven books total. But I will say right off the bat, I've only read one. <laughs> I've only read one of the books and that's the book we're going to go over first and then the rest I have not read. So I have a lot to choose from and like always the point of this video is for me to go back see if I've read them and then pick one to put on my TBR for normally the following month but this time for this week that I need to finish to make sure I'm actually reading the books that I'm buying. What I'm going to do when I talk about the books is I'll give a very, very brief synopsis. I'll mostly be talking about why I bought the book in the first place, um, why I was interested in it or how I heard about it. And then if I'm still interested in reading that book. So far, when I've done the book haul revisits, I'm always still interested. But yeah, this is an interesting selection of books. So let's go ahead and dive on in. So first book and the only book that I've read for this book I'll revisit is Big Swiss. This was a five star prediction for me. I do five star predictions most of the time from April to March every year. So I picked this last year and I have read it. I did enjoy it, but it wasn't a five star for me. This book is about a woman who's a transcriptionist for a sex therapist, and she becomes enamored with one of the clients that she does the transcriptions for and facilitates a way to meet her in real life and things ensue from there. This is a very messy book. There are maybe a few questionable phrasings, things that she's talking about, She's not a likable character by any means and all that type of stuff I can get down with but this really went way more off the rails than I ever thought it was going to be and definitely look up trigger warnings for this book because there are a number of them. Overall I think I gave this book probably around a four star. I enjoyed it but I didn't love it. I thought it had some flaws. Didn't quite hit the mark that I wanted it to but still enjoyed reading it. I've kept the book. Who knows if I'll reread it one day but definitely got to one, so that's good. I, I at least haven't had a book haul revisit where I've read zero so far, so that's saying something. All right, so now let's get into the books that I have not read. First up, we have one of the collections of Freeman's. This is the one on power specifically. So Freeman's is a literary journal, but it's collected in essentially a book and it has a ton of amazing authors on it. So you can see all the last names of the authors on this one. Uh, but for example, there's Margaret Atwood in this, Julia Alvarez, Alif Shafak, Leila Soleimani, and on and on and on. So this one specifically, like I said, is on power. All of them have a central theme that they're asking the writers to expound upon. And this is the only one that I have of Freeman's, although I have kind of rifled through some of them in the past, but I haven't read a full collection front to back. But this is the one that I wanted to start with. Sadly, the last collection of Freeman's came out last year. I want to say it's called Conclusions, and that's the theme of that one. Um, so yeah, coming to an end, which is very sad. John Freeman is very much a huge part of the literary community in the U.S., and he is a great human being all around. So I'm excited to still get to this. In terms of picking this up, I have not had the best of luck with short story collections or essay collections this year and even at the end of last year. And not to say that I haven't picked up ones that were of good quality, but I have just struggled to read them. I'm in a little bit of a strange, almost slumpish you might call it, 
era where I just need something to be pretty captivating and gripping and having things quickly end and then having to get reinvested in a new story hasn't been what my mind has needed at the moment so this might not be a good pick for me at the time although I do still very much want to read it. So that is Freeman's but the publisher is Grove for that one. All right next up we have two more essay collections and let's talk about this now because this probably also isn't going to be end up being my pick for my TBR. The first is Girlhood. Now I have actually started this collection. I think I've read the first two essays and this is published by Bloomsbury and it's by Melissa Phoebos. This one is all about girlhood and womanhood and coming from the author's personal experience of what it was like for example to grow up and develop large breasts from a young age and how she was sexualized very inappropriately at a young age because of that, um, how it impacted her relationship to her own body and on and on and on. I was enjoying this but like I said this was a, a sort of DNF for now when I picked it up because I haven't been doing well with collections. So I've DNF'd it for now, but I do want to pick it back up again, and I do think I will love this. Last year I thought it was going to be my year of Melissa Phoebos, but it ended up being my year of Melissa Broder instead, and I think this year might be the year for Melissa Phoebos. I actually have another one right here, Body Work, by her as well. So yeah, hopefully I'll get to this at some point, but probably not going to be the pick. All right, next essay collection, and this is actually a five-star prediction. And I really do need to get to it, but that is wanting. It's Women Writing About Desire. It's edited by Margot Kahn and Kelly McMasters. And it is, again, an essay collection published by Catapult. Some authors in here are Kristen Arnett, Sonora Jaw, Tori Peters, Larissa Pham, Lisa Tadeo, more, more, more. Definitely still interested in this. Again, it was a five-star prediction. But similarly, like I've said, I've just struggled to pick them up recently. The one thing that tempts me about this is... I'm getting to when I would typically want to do another five star predictions video. I like doing them partially into the year because it gives a little time for some of the new releases to come out because I always do five new releases and five backlist. So I, I want some books for the new releases to already be out for me to be able to read. But again, I'm worried about this. This is long. I doubt I would be able to read this within six to seven days. So if I don't read it this week, honestly, I will probably need to read it next month, but I might leave it to next month anyway, but still definitely want to read it. I love books about desire and female pleasure, all those types of things. And this is so up my alley. I would really be surprised if I didn't love this. And I will say Catapult's nonfiction selection, they have a nonfiction selection that is mostly geared towards writing and kind of offshoots of writing in a number of ways. This is a little bit of a departure for them, but I think this is going to get into the author's perspective of what it's like for them to write about female desire. So I think it kind of ties into what they normally do, but that is wanting. All right, next we have three novels. These are probably the ones that I'm going to choose from for my TBR pick. The first one, actually the, fir the first two of these were picked out of a little free library for the month. Um, and I'm always very grateful when I find things in my little free library that I want. Firstly, we have The Netanyahu's by Joshua Cohen. This is published by New York Review Books and it won the Pulitzer Prize a couple of years ago now. The next one also won the Pulitzer Prize. And this one I initially picked up because I heard someone say it was like loosely veiled takedown of, I mean, not just the Netanyahu's, but sort of also paralleling Trump and the Trump family. And I thought that sounded very interesting and was here for it. So since then, I have heard very mixed reviews and it has made me question if I'm going to like this. It does say that it's about identity and politics and it's supposed to be slightly comedic. So I still have high hopes. This is the shortest one on this book haul revisit. So that alone is intriguing me, honestly. Next up, we have the other Pulitzer Prize winner in this book haul revisit, and that is Trust by Hernan Diaz. This one is published by Riverhead Books. It co-won the Pulitzer last year with Demon Copperhead, and I am very much still interested in this. I have wanted this book since 2019. So in 2019, it was announced that this was going to be published in 2020. 
and I was so excited for this book and then it kept getting delayed and delayed and delayed. Obviously COVID, not judging that happens. I don't even know what the reason was, but when it finally came out, I was so excited because I've been waiting so many years and then it started getting a ton of buzz and doing really well on a bunch of prizes. So it made me even more excited. This is a novel that is about capitalism and corporate America and greed and it's told in a bunch of different kind of sections or like perspectives as well all covering the same story so you can start to get more context and therefore hopefully see a more holistic picture of what might really be going on because the main man that I think they're talking about, I can't remember his name, Benjamin and Helen Rask, might not see himself as what he really is. So I, again, I've heard it's great. I definitely want to get to it. It is large though. And I definitely want to read this physically because it does come from different perspectives and not via audio. So I need to find like actual sit down time to pick it up. All right, and last one is Devil House by John Darnielle. This one is published by NCD by FSG. And I love the cover on this one. I picked this one up because originally last year I was supposed to read In Cold Blood by Truman Capote, which is a true crime novel, one of the first true crime novels, maybe even the first, who knows. Um, and I've never read it before. It's sort of like a modern classic and I was gonna read it with my partner, but that fell by the wayside a little bit because that book is very large and my partner was not ready to commit to it because they were struggling to read at the end of last year. But I had picked this up as a companion novel to that potential reading because this is supposed to be a critique on the true crime genre. I don't read true crime much at all, um, but I do want to make sure if I'm consuming it, I'm thinking about the impact of it. So I thought this might be a good companion. I've heard really mixed reviews on this, but I do think this might be for me. But now I think I might save this for October just because of the kind of haunted house aspect to it. I think this one might be an easy pick for me for my TBR, which normally it isn't, but this this time it is. And I'm going to pick the Netanyahu's. Now, am I picking this because it's the smallest book? Absolutely. But I'm also picking this because this is the one of all of the books I just talked about that I'm probably least interested in anymore. And the one that I'm most likely to DNF if I had to take a guess without having read any of them. So that might work in my favor if I end up DNFing it. Part of this is to get through the books that I bought, even if I don't like them, like I just want to know and then it can go into somebody else's hands. So I'm totally fine with DNFing a book. I do it quite often actually. And yeah, this is short. And if I DNF it, it's even shorter. So I think I can actually accomplish this one. So if you have read this book, please let me know what you thought about it. And I will report back in my wrap up what ends up happening with this one. So thanks for watching. You're going to get my book haul revisit for March in just a couple of videos. So you'll be seeing that one soon. And then hopefully I'll be back on track. And yeah, I hope you all have a great day. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.